Hi guys. Well, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, <laughs> here on this uh, soon to be frosty night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this chilly what are where are we Monday January 4th 2021 as we start another year of trying to figure out the collapse of a planet oh yes well this is collapse chronicles and I am Sam Mitchell and I really appreciate my uh my alert tribes members confusing me until I die. Uh, you know, so Sister Julie and Brother JJ have each sent me an article, and I don't even know. I think they're talking about two interpretations of <coughs> the same study. So here is ABC News with their headline, Study, Warming Already Baked In Will Blow Past Climate Goals. Hmm. A new study says the amount of global warming already baked into the air because of past carbon pollution is enough to blow past internationally agreed upon climate limits. So many times have we had this. So this is ABC News, and I'm just going to read the start of this. The amount of baked-in global warming from carbon pollution already in the air is enough to blow past international agreed-upon goals to limit climate change, a new study finds. But it is not game over, because while that amount of warming may be inevitable, it can be delayed for centuries if the world quickly stops emitting, I love this word, extra extra greenhouse gases from the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas, the study's authors say, and then they go and break this all down to, until you are completely confused and you have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Half the people and say, you, you know, the doomers, the... Uh, the climate doomers, the climate doomers, as we're called here, uh, you know, half the climate doomers, you know, talking about all of the stuff that I've been talking about on Collapse Chronicles for, you know, two and a half years. How many people, uh, you know, all of this stuff we hear about the, you know, all of this stuff being baked in, the the shit that we're seeing now going on is, is coming from the stuff that we put in the air 30 years ago. We hear that one. The stuff we're putting in the air in 2021 20, won't be showing up on the planet until 2051. You know all about that 30-year delay. And of course, the the words you will never hear anywhere in this article, methane. Methane, you know, talking about the uh, the the feedback loops going on up there in the Arctic with the melting permafrost and the whole bit about the methane bomb blowing, you are never gonna hear uh, as this debate rages. Um, uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> yes, if the world gets to net zero carbon emissions soon, I think we're aiming for, what is it, 2050 for this mythical BS net zero carbon emissions, two degrees of global warming could be delayed enough so that it won't happen for centuries, giving society time to adapt 
or even come up with technolo technological fixes. Yes. Uh, so then we flip over to this article from Inside Climate News, which they have titled, hilariously, okay, Inside Climate News, many scientists now say global warming could stop relatively quickly after emissions go to zero. So what this article does is they go on and on and on, you know, talking about all of the stuff we learned in the year 2020. It's, it's one of these roundup articles from some of the climate doom and gloom, you know, inside the climate news of 2020. They, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. So they, 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 they go through the Rolodex of all the reasons that we're screwed, and they, and, they, and they do a pretty good job, and then they roll out the hopium at the end, uh, at, at, so they, they put all the reasons why we're toast, and then at the end, they, uh, you know, they put their little Hollywood happy ending on this, uh, on this otherwise pretty good article, some scientist, some scientist. So up here in the in the headline, it is many scientist. But now many scientist has dropped to some scientist punctuate their alarming war warnings with hopeful messages because they know that the worst possible outcome is avoidable. Recent research shows that stopping greenhouse gas emissions will break the vicious cycle of warming temperatures, melting ice, wildfires, and rising sea levels faster than expected just a few years ago. There is less warming in the pipeline than we thought. Hmm said Imperial College climate scientist Joeri Rogeji. Yes, oh, a lead author of the next major climate assessment from the IPCC. So what we can look forward to from the IPCC is some backsliding, uh, you know, making their rosy predictions. Um, there you go. It is our best understanding that if we bring down CO2, no mention of methane, no mention of the fact of this 30-year lag time, if we bring down CO2 to net zero, the warming will level off. The climate will stabilize. Within a decade or two, there will be very little to no additional warming. Our best estimate is zero. Close quote. Yes. Uh, and then one of these other uh, clueless morons here. I can't even, I, I can't find the name of, of, of this guy. Oh, uh, maybe this is Michael Mann. It would be really Good. Uh, if the, I think this is Michael Mann, this article is so horribly written. I think this is a quote from Michael Mann. This really is true. It's a dramatic change in the paradigm that has been lost on many who covered this issue. Uh, but perhaps because it has not been well explained by the scientific community. Yes, it's definitely the scientific consensus now that warming stabilizes quickly within 10 years of emissions going to zero. 
and uh, I think you can find right here on this channel. Oh, I don't know. I, I would really like to, uh, you, you know, to get some comments uh, about this BS uh, from, uh, I don't know, Peter Wadhams, Andrew Glickson, and just, just oh, the Hopian. But anyway, before they pulled out, uh, before they pulled out this crap at the end, it was a pretty good article, uh, before they completely, the wheels fell off. All right, but we're going to look at the rest of the article before the hopium wagon was rolled out from inside climate news. <clears throat> Parts of the world economy may have been on pause during 2020, dampening greenhouse gas emissions for a while, but that did not slow the overall buildup of atmospheric carbon dioxide, which reached its highest level this year, 2020, well, last year, now 2020, in millions of years. And as I mentioned in my no-brainer predictions for 2021 yesterday, it will, uh, CO2 levels will be higher at the end of 2021 than now. They are going nowhere but up, up, up. And we're just talking about CO2 here. Uh, since nobody's talking about methane. If anything, research during 2020 showed global warming is accelerating. Symptoms of the fever include off-the-charts heat waves on the land and in the oceans and a hyperactive and destructive Atlantic hurricane season. And uh, I'm going to try to remember to put the link to this article because they link you to all of these other articles, uh, you know, from 2020, pointing out that, that the news is nothing but bleak. <clears throat> The last year is on pace to end up as either the hottest or second hottest on record for the planet. Yes, here are five aspect, aspects of climate change that were new and unexpected in 2020. So I, I gave you the spoiler alert of the last and least one uh, about how some of these scientists are now, uh, I, I, I honestly don't know what it, I, I can go through all of the borderline conspiracy uh, wacko ideas uh, of why any climatologist right now after this, but anyway, we've heard that crap. Let's hear some reality. First, let's look at the La Nina effect that was going on this year. <clears throat> Scientists noticed that the persistent heating, you know, in 2020 came even with the tropical Pacific Ocean tilting toward a cyclical cooling phase that suppresses the global average temperature slightly. November's warmth across the planet, according to climatologist Zach Labe, was, quote, stunning, especially considering the ongoing La Nina. During La Nina, cooler than average sea surface temperatures spread across a large part of the tropical Pacific during the warm El Nino phase every few years. It's the opposite. And that is when, usually when global temperatures spike to new records. The global climate signal from the cycle usually as strong as about three or four months after the ocean cycle peaks, so the full effect won't be known until next year. Um, blah, blah, blah. This is Stefan Rashmorf with the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. Quote, 2020 may beat 2016 without the extra push from El Nino, close quote. This year's warming is another side, is another sign 
that heat being trapped by greenhouse gases is overwhelming our planet's natural variability, said Jennifer Francis, a climate scientist with the Woodwell Climate Research Center in Massachusetts, quoting Jennifer Francis, who I've We'll try again to get Jennifer on the show. She has politely declined in the past. Quote, I hate to think what the global temperature would have been this year if we had been in an El Nino rather than La Nina. Okay, so that's how much La Nina helped us out this year. So let's look at the wrap-up from the polar breakdown Warming in the Arctic and the Antarctic continues to accelerate faster than the global average scientists reported this year. In September, NASA Earth wrote, quote, the Arctic region is warming three times as fast as the rest of the planet with effects beyond the ocean, close quote. Um... And in June, a team of scientists tracked a similar rate of warming in Antarctica. Uh, since 1989, the temperature at the South Pole has increased about 0 0.6 degrees Fahrenheit per decade, which is also three times as fast as the global average. The warming of the polar regions disrupts global climate patterns in ways that can cause more extreme droughts, floods, and heat waves, and changes in climate-regulating ocean currents. In a recent letter to the incoming Biden administration, 193 Arctic scientists spelled out their growing concerns, including, quote, acidification of the Arctic Ocean that threatens U.S. fisheries and a loss of sea ice that contributes to, quote, persistent heat waves and cold spells, prolonged stormy periods, and extended droughts that greatly worsen western wildfires, close quote. All right, I do not believe it, although we will not hear the word methane anywhere in this article, we do tiptoe around this. The rapid Arctic warming has also triggered permafrost thaw. That is, quote, now releasing carbon, meaning uh, methane, at the same scale as many larger nations, close quote, the scientist rose Rising sea levels from melting gla glaciers and polar ice sheets have accelerated clear day flooding and storm damage, especially along the U.S. Um, eastern and Gulf Coast. The letter called on Biden to appoint a U.S. ambassador with a climate mandate to the Arctic Council as a way of recognizing the, quote, urgency of the threat from a disintegrating Arctic. So, uh, at least they did mention the permafrost thaw that has nothing to do with uh, emissions. You know, if we completely stopped every emission on this planet as as how many times have we been through this that everything you know the the 30 year lag and that the methane bomb the the feedback loop uh has already been triggered the genie is out of the bottle the toothpaste is out of the tube uh nowhere in 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 uh Unless it's somewhere deep in the, you know, in that BS study they're talking about. Okay, let's look at uh, sea level rise. Well, let's do the wrap up from sea level rise. Um, as polar ice melts more quickly, 
sea level rise also accelerates, but sea level is complicated. And, and so anyway, all right. In the best case scenario, uh, the best case scenario of reaching the Paris target of capping global warming at 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, sea levels will rise between one and two feet by 2100. The IPC uh, warned in a 2019 global assessment the acceleration could be especially could be felt especially strongly along the west coast where sea level is starting to rise much faster than in recent years according to NASA uh, researchers with the agency said a decades long lull in sea level rise is now ending large scale changes in the pacific ocean are accelerating the inundation of beach beaches and marshes as well as the erosion of the coastal bluffs where millions of people have built homes and businesses and you can go out there to california and see this uh, this is Bill Sweet with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Quote, in the next 20 to 30 years, by 2050, sea level will be about a foot higher compared to 2000. There is going to be more erosion and we are going to lose beaches, he said, identifying San Diego and the San Francisco Bay Area as potential trouble spots. A lot of the Bay Area is built on reclaimed low-lying land that is permeable and vulnerable to incoming salt water. Yes, that's the, like the uh, San Francisco airport, for instance. Um, yep, yep, yep. And then they draw the dots uh, between climate science and climate justice. You know, as we've heard how many times uh, that it is, you know... Uh, all those other folks uh, that are going to get it uh, before we do. And that so much of this research, you know, looks at the U.S. and Europe, uh, while the rest of the, the, those, what, what are they called, useless eaters can figure out what to do uh, then. So they, 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 unroll all of this litany of ways that 2020 showed how doomed we are and then they wrap up with this crap making it stop making it stop oh yeah uh but anyway i i i just love it making it stop but I want to thank uh, ABC News from uh, for getting to the chase. Warming already baked in will blow past climate goals, which is exactly. Well, thank you, ABC News, for explaining that to us. But guys, I, I mean, this is the reason why uh, these climate change deniers, such as our old friend Book Hermit, for instance, you know, go around spouting uh, the, the, this crap that there's no evidence of climate change. Uh, I, I, I just got back from the Everglades, okay? I just spent a week in the Everglades. Don't get me going on evidence of in the ramping up collapse of a planet from climate change. We are, we're completely doomed, guys. Uh, 
anyway, but, but it's crap like this. It's, the, it's this hopium-fueled crap like this it, it, it is the reason that you have all of these idiots out there. Uh, you know, I, I, can, I can hear uh, Alex Jones waving uh, this new study around. Uh, and of course, it's a big if, like like we're really going to get uh, emissions down to, and it's cut the crap about this net zero. I was talking a couple of weeks ago about the definition of net zero. The definition of net zero is is that it's crap. Uh, you know, we're not for for one thing. Uh, if it if, if it's based on, on an if, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Number one, and if it were to happen, it makes no difference. The methane bomb is blowing. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I really want to avoid just turning this channel into a climate change channel. Uh, as much as I argue with Book Hermit, I, I, I love to have our contrarian uh, climate change denier here on this channel. But as much as I argue with Book Hermit about climate change, I do agree with him uh, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of what the man says. People forget that climate change is one of nine planetary boundaries. Okay, there's nine horses in the race to take down a planet. Right now, climate change is the dark horse in the back of the pack. Okay, it is, as of the opening of 2021, uh, the other planetary boundaries are closer to the finish line of this planet. But climate change, with each year, the dark horse is, is, is going to be catching up with the rest of the pack and, and overtaking it. And uh, e even, if, even if climate change is the last horse to cross the finish line, if he stumbled and fell and, and, and broke his leg uh, in, in the final charge, it would make no difference. There's eight other horsemen of the apocalypse, as it were, horses of the apocalypse. Uh, you know, that nobody is talking about. The other eight planetary boundaries, every bit as important as this one. This one is getting a little bit of news. Uh, nobody uh, wanting to talk about the other eight horses uh, in the room. Anyway, guys, I need to uh, go freshen my margarita and get me an ice-cold margarita on this frosty night in the collapse. And I suggest you do the same. Bye, guys.